Hey guys and welcome to a super long video. We are getting ready for our first stretch of pro rodeos. We are going to be gone for two whole weeks. So before we leave, we have never used an electric fence before. So we want to make sure we know how to set it up properly, make sure it works, and make sure the horses are used to it. So we set up this first little pin and I got Dakota in there and we tried to turn it on but it wasn't exactly that great so after this we took it down and built a whole new setup and this one we liked a lot more so i got dakota back in there and when we really liked it i went and got chester so he could also test this out so they know what it is and um not to touch it but this fence will allow us to set them up a really good amount of space at a lot of the fairgrounds we are going to be staying at. That way they can stretch and walk around and graze. Here Chester shocks himself. Dude. <laughs> just don't touch it again. He just grazed after that little run in. Once I feel like the horses have had enough time and experience in this little pen and we know we have it set up right, nothing's going to fall apart, it is time to clean out the horse trailer. I want to make sure the horse trailer is very clean for them on long hauls. I want it always clean, but especially when they're going to be in there for, say, 15 hours. You don't want that ammonia smell being really strong and you don't want them standing and all of that nastiness. So I make sure to really strip the trailer and I'm going to put in some brand new shavings. Once I'm done with that, we are going to load up some alfalfa and other things we need. The horses are going to need plenty of forage while we're gone, so we want to make sure we have plenty. We are leaving in the morning, so less than 24 hours, and I'm going to be gone. Not coming home at all for two weeks, so of course I need a pair of jeans for every day. And I have to have rodeo shirts because everything is dress code, non-negotiable. Gotta have my dress code on. So we're gonna hang up all of my clothes. I have this like jean hanger thing I'm gonna use for them so they don't take up as much space in our tiny little closet. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I have my favorite jeans for sure. You. I'm assuming I just hang them like this. My purse. is done so we can go hang it up. Now we have to hang up all of my rodeo shirts. This outing I'm running at four rodeos for sure so I need four shirts and I'm gonna pack some extra in case anything crazy happens I have some other options. Also might rain while we're there so I'm gonna pack my Junior Worlds jacket just in case. Now that I have all my clothes sorted it is time to move on to the tack room. I want to make sure I have everything I could possibly need and I need to clean it up because it is a mess and I don't want it looking like this whenever I get to where we are going. So I'm gonna get all of my boots into the boot bag, make sure I wrap them up nicely so they all fit in there better. And this is also gonna allow me to take, I guess, a little bit of inventory and make sure there is nothing missing. So when I get to Texas, I am not in trouble because I forgot a pair of boots or a bit or something. 10 hours away at home so this is just going to really let me clean things up and get everything organized while also making sure I have everything 
Now that those boots are ready, I'm just going to get all of my breast collars and make sure I have them hung up as well as my helmets. I just want to make sure everything looks nice and neat. I have this random saddle stand, but I'm still going to take it. So I set it up, got everything kind of miscellaneous out. And now that's what we're looking at. I make sure I have all my spurs big fix with me. And now we have to make sure we have all of their feed. Dakota and Chester eat different kinds of feed, so I make sure Chester has two bags of Purina Senior and that Dakota has two bags of High Gain feed. That way we do not run out and have to scramble to find their food while we're on the road. And I'm also bringing a bunch of chopped alfalfa just in case I want to make a mash or we need it for some reason. I took the feed pans out, but now I'm going to put them back in and put in our suck seed. And there's all of our feed ready to go. And now I'm going to put in some other tubes of different things. So I have some wormer and some ulcer guard and a bunch of electrolyte paste. I love to give them the electrolyte paste after they run. And now we are going to get them some steamed alfalfa for their hay bags in the trailer. So I'm going to fill up my hay gain steamer, fill up with water, and make sure it is at the right level, screw that lid on and turn it on. We are going to get one more practice run in on Dakota before we are thrown to the wolves in less than a week. I'm really needing to ride up into my pocket way further before I grab the horn. So today we are going to practice two handing all three barrels. I'm going to see how that goes. We are going to go get him ready, tacked up and ready to ride. We also have to fix his braids because they are a week old and I want them to be nice as we leave for Texas. The first thing I'm going to do with his hair is get all of these braids out and once I have them all out I'm going to start brushing. It takes me a minute to get them all out because I think this time I did like 21 braids or something crazy. So it does take me a minute to get them all out. I make sure to be very gentle when I'm taking these braids out and there's a look at his unbraided I hair. am actually just going to use Detangler today. I washed it a week ago and I like to wash every other week. So today we're just going to use some good old Detangler and get it rebraided. I'm just going to run that Detangler kind of along what I guess you might call his scalp and just really rub it in since I am not shampooing this time. And then I'll put little amounts on my hands to really run through the ends of his hair before I start brushing. And once I think it is brushed really good, I'm gonna start braiding. I'm doing a little bit bigger braids this time, sort of for time, but I know I rebraid once a week and I can keep an eye on them to make sure they aren't bugging him or anything like that. And his hair is so long and so thick, so these braids are so pretty but they do take me a long time to do. So that is why I've sped it up for you guys. I do like to keep it braided for heat reasons so that that long thick mane is not making him super sweaty. And this allows the hair to be a little bit more protected, detangled and allows it to grow better. There is a look at that freshly braided hair and it is time for me to tack up. So I throw on my saddle pad and then my saddle, make sure it's in the right place, get on this super cute breast collar once I have the cinches done up. And then I put on some boots and that is it. So once I have all of this on, we are ready to go ride. I normally don't ride in leg boots at home, but like I said, we are going to be practicing the barrels just a little bit. So I get out here and I get them warmed up. I did trot both ways and now you're seeing that I am loping both ways. This is really to make sure his muscles, his ligaments, his joints, his everything is nice and warm before I ask him to do anything that could possibly be a little strenuous and now I am doing just a little drill. I'm not very good at this one faster. We're still getting used to it. So I'm just doing it at a walk right now. This is supposed to help him finish that first barrel better. So once I go out, I do kind of bump him with my inside leg to make sure his butt finishes that barrel and I walk the rest of the pattern over exaggerating what I'm wanting 
to happen in our actual run. So I walked the pattern I think two times, really making sure he over finishes those barrels and then I breeze him through. And this is the first time I've ever run a horse through the barrels with two hands. And I wasn't really supposed to be running running, so that's why I'm trying to slow him down between the first and second because he was ready to go. But I did two hand every single barrel in this run which is new to me and he did so good so I pet on him and cool him out and I'm telling him he did great and once he's cooled out we do walk the pattern one last time just to keep the barrels a calm happy place and not a place that we are always you know just running and losing our minds so I walk him through that whole pattern again <music> The second I hop off, I'm going to loosen those cinches and then once I have the cinches loosened, I'm going to get down and get those boots off. Boots can trap some heat on the legs, so I like to make sure that as soon as I am done, the boots come off and he was being really sweet and I wanted to pet on him and just tell him that he was so good. And now it's time to open up our hay steamer because it is done steaming. Look at that. Now I'm going to ice his legs, really focusing on doing the ice massage on his hocks and giving him some treats again because he did so good and I just like to reward them. Now when the boots are done, I'm going to take them off and feel that his hocks are really nice and cool and I get him back into his stall where I'm sure he is gonna beg me for food and I make sure that door is shut because he will leave. He will open it and he will leave. Now it's time for Chester. So when I get Chester in the wash rack, I'm just gonna do those cross ties and we're gonna do his nebulizer. Just because he was struggling with some allergies, I wanna make sure his airway is nice and open and that he doesn't have the risk of getting any sort of sinus infection from those allergies. He does really hate the nebulizer, so while it's going, I kind of stand with him, pet him, reassure him that it's okay, and then when it is done, I get it off, and he is very, very happy, and the puppy was all on my deck, so I'm glad, I guess, that it was comfy. Now that Chester's done, I'm going to fill up their hay bags for the trailer in the morning with that alfalfa we steamed. The steaming really makes that alfalfa nice and moist and really holds that water well, and it makes it a lot softer and easier to eat for them, especially on the road. And I cleaned out that hay steamer. We have to take the treats and then some extra fly masks, some electrolytes, and a nice big bottle of Spurs Big Fix. While we're gone, Kite gets the huge back turnout. He gets the turnout from the stall and a stall. So he is going to be living it up while we are gone. So before we load the horses up, this is the time that we are going to make sure we have everything from the barn that we need. So you can see we're loading up my hay steamer into that stud wall because I am going to be steaming a lot of alfalfa while we are gone for the horses. That way it just eliminates allergies and it's much better for them to eat. I'm also going to make sure that all of the windows are down so the horses don't get too hot and they have a good amount of airflow in there. And now I'm going to double check that tack room and make sure I absolutely do not forget anything that I'm going to need for the next two weeks. Absolutely everything. All the feed, all my tack, just anything I really might need, including our supplements. And once I'm done double checking that, we are going to get those hay bags I made the night before and hang them up in their spots. Once those are hung up, we are ready to load up and go. So I put on... Dakota's super cute Dr. Pepper halter, of course, and get him out to the trailer. While I'm walking Dakota out there, my mom gets Chester just to make us a little bit more 
time efficient and she walks him out there before they can go in the trailer they do have to have their fly masks on since they have hay bags in there and the windows are down i don't want anything blowing into their eyes and causing any kinds of problems so once his fly mask is on i am ready to load him up and he does pretty good taking himself in he just needs just a tiny tiny bit of encouragement and I do clip them with some quick releases in here and I'm just going to leave that lead rope hung over his neck and I'm going to shut him in there. Once he's shut in there, I'm ready for Chester. Chester is a champ about loading, so he runs right up in there and I also put a little quick release on him while he is absolutely tearing up that hay bag right in my face, getting alfalfa all over me, I pick out some shavings I spotted in his tail and then get that butt bar up and shut those doors. I also make sure all of the windows on this side are open to make sure, again, that they don't get too hot in there and it's nice and breezy. And we are ready to pull out and head to Texas. We aren't making the full drive to Houston in this day. We are stopping um, about three hours away from Houston, I would say, just to really break up the trip for the horses. So we're going to be here for a few days and let them adjust a little bit. They are both great at hauling, so I'm very blessed and thankful about that. So I get Chester out of the trailer and he gets to go to his stall. And then I am getting Dakota out. And here they have really nice big stalls. We actually stayed at this place once on this channel when we went and ran at Globe Life Field. So it is that same kind of horse hotel, but this time we got two horses instead of one. The stalls here are really big. They have a nice big water trough and nice big runs so they can really walk around and graze and just be really close to one another. You can see Dakota getting a really nice drink after that haul and he has spotted that there are some very, very scary sheep. Um, I'm letting him settle in, but they do both have alfalfa in their stalls. Chester could care less about the sheep, but Dakota's a little worried about them. Now it is the next morning and I'm getting their breakfast ready. Here you can see I'm making Chester's and I do give him some electrolytes to really make sure he is replenished and drinking, especially while we are hauling so much. He gets some omeprazole powder and some aquinity powder. And the last thing he gets on his morning feed is six seed. There he is really enjoying that and I am going to make Dakota's feed while there is a dog training kind of thing happening at this barn right now. So I'm kind of laughing while they are finding a rat behind me, but Dakota's not getting anything on his feed this morning. So I just get it right out of the container and then put his pan right in his stall and he is happy to eat. So he has definitely improved since the night before when he saw those super scary sheep for the first time. Freely is enjoying hotel life for two nights. These are gonna be some of the only nights, literally all year, that we get to spend in a hotel room. Because the rest of the time, we are definitely going to be staying in the horse trailer. So we are all enjoying it while we can. I didn't mean to take your, your alligator, I'm sorry. There you go. Now we're going to go steam some alfalfa for them. If you remember, I said we were for sure taking my hay gain hay steamer with us and I was being stared at while I was filling it up. So I, of course, had to go give them a little handful of alfalfa to please them while I kept doing what I was doing. I get some water in the hay chest, shut it, open up the actual steamer part and fill it up and turn it on. Once that is on and steaming, I do give them some treats because, you know, it's just total torture for them to watch me handle food without actually giving it to them. So they enjoyed their little treats and some nice scratches. Today will be night two and our last night in the horse hotel until we go onto the fairgrounds where the first rodeo is. Today I've dealt with getting stalls for a rodeo later in the month in Florida and I have to sign up for another pro rodeo. So we've been pretty busy, but tomorrow we are gonna leave and head down to the fairgrounds where we have a hookup where my first rodeo is. 
And I did bring my hay steamer with me, so we are steaming some hay for them right now. This will be for tonight and for in the trailer tomorrow. These stalls are super big here for them, so I've been loving that. They have those giant runs where they can go outside, walk around, and graze. The only problem Dakota has is that there are sheep here. Freely also does not like the sheep, so they agree about that. I look the way I do because I just took a nap in the horse trailer. But the hay has done steaming, so let's open the hay chest. Look at all of that steam. You know, it is all steamed really good when you have that much. And now I'm going to sweep out where I got some alfalfa on the ground. I'm always very thankful for people that allow us to stay in their barn, so I want to make sure I clean up after myself for sure. And there's little violence going on during my sweep, which was very, very rude. Today is Wednesday. Today we were supposed to make the three hour drive down to Hempstead, Texas, but there we do not have any stalls and they're going to be in the electric fence and the weather is really, really, really terrible. It's supposed to storm and just rain a ton, so we have decided to stay here another night. The ponies can have a nice roof over their heads, some big stalls, and we don't have to deal with the rain hopefully too much. Because of that, we have to steam even more hay so that they have steamed hay in the morning and for their alfalfa bags in the horse trailer. They're eating breakfast right now, so hopefully they won't yell at me too much while we get the hay steamer set up and steaming. While that is steaming, we are going to pick the trailer out a little bit. Again, just making sure it is super clean for them to ride in. like at least an hour for the alfalfa to cool down so we are gonna go do some things go back to the hotel room and then we will be back here to give them a little bit and probably go ahead and make their alfalfa bags for tomorrow why are you pushing me it's not cold So while we were stuck here in Texas for a while to rodeo, I got an eye infection, so I had to get my eye doctor to call in antibiotics eye drops for me at some random Walgreens. So I can't see anything because I took my contacts out. Am I gonna show you my address? No. Eye drop reveal. <laughs> Look, you like my eye drops? They asked me if I was allergic to them, and I said no. So if I am, I'll vlog it. Let me get a little closer for you. All good. Feels so much better. <laughs> now I'm stuck in these. Good morning. It is Thursday, October 5th, which also happens to be my birthday. And today we are actually going to be making the drive from Mansfield to basically Houston. I think it's gonna be about four-ish hours. It stormed all night. I thought the power in the hotel was gonna go out and I hope you guys stayed inside for most of it. But we are gonna get them breakfast before we head off.
done eating their breakfast, it's time to load them up to head off to the Waller County Fairgrounds. So fly masks on, halters on, and they are ready to go. First up is Dakota, who is wanting to eat grass more than he was wanting to load up. But he goes in there perfectly and goes straight to that alfalfa bag we made. And he was quite aggressive about it. I always have to get out of the way because they will smack me in the face trying to get their alfalfa out very aggressively. And then it's Chester's turn to go. And he always runs right up into the trailer. It is definitely a dream. <laughs> When we get there, I unload them and tie them up at the trailer. That way we can set up their little electric pins. They can graze and walk around in these. And for some reason, Chester wanted to chew on the little RV spot post. I'm still not exactly sure what that was about. So we get all the stakes in, the grounding rod in, the tape for the fence, just all of that set up. There's a look at it and then they are ready. We have made it to the Waller County Fair and Rodeo Fairgrounds. We have them tied to the trailer right now. We've got the electric fence set up, but before we put them in it, I'm gonna brush them off a little bit. Dakota and I are up in the morning slack, so they kind of get tonight to just chill and hang out, and then I will run in the morning. I'm mostly just getting off where it rained on them last night, and then the alfalfa that blew out of their bags onto them during the trailer ride over. I'll give him a much better groom in the morning. When I'm done brushing them, it's time to get them into their pins. I get Chester in first and then Dakota and we just kind of let them chill for a minute and just look around and walk around and graze, of course, which they're always so excited to do. And I have a little snack myself. We're going to go ahead and feed them dinner. Chester's going to be so excited. Tarina Sr. and dessert tech. <laughs> Right yeah, go ahead. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm just scared. Don't shock yourself over this. <laughs> Flawless. Your room service. There you go. I left their halters on in case they decide to jailbreak and run around the fairgrounds. I have something that I could clip onto them. So they will probably keep them on for a little bit. Happy campers. Since I've never done this before, we are probably gonna go watch the performance that is up tonight because I run in the morning. Just so I can kind of get an idea, see what everybody's doing, where they're warming up and how the pattern is and then Dakota gets the call in the morning for our first pro rodeo. Not his first, my first for sure. And then Sunday will be mine and Chester's first pro rodeo together and his first ever. Is that confusing? That's kind of a skill. Yeah, look at him. He's smart. Wow. I'm impressed. Oh no. Dakota. <laughs> that was all your fault. Your shirt and get shot. No, I didn't. <laughs> you can barely see me, but it's currently 5.30 a.m. because Slack starts at 8. So everybody is getting to eat super early. I really don't know what's happening and the sun is taking forever to come up so I'm saddling kind of probably early just so I have plenty of time to figure out what we're doing. Master 
Your Saddles Breast Color today. I think I'm going to run him in a teal flare strip today. We have a lot of options that you will see probably soon, but the kind of turquoise teal ones are my favorite. And right now I'm just trying to pretend like this is another barrel race. It's just a practice and that there is nothing special about it. So you're gonna be getting the designer boots for today. Gorge. Take your mask off. I'm trying, I'm trying. Hang on. I know that if I take his halter off, he will, he will leave. So this is just a safer option. Here I go. to do is get my helmet on and then we are good to go warm up. Because we hauled quite a ways, I do walk for a long time before I do anything else in our warm up. Once I feel like I've walked a long time, I'm going to long trot him around and I do post the trot on him. So I'm going to go around in a lot of circles basically at this trot and I will make sure to go both ways. I want to make sure both sides are evenly warmed up and then when I'm done with this little trot, we will of course lope both ways. warming up I get closer to the arena and pick out his feet they did not look very bad at all but I do want to make sure there's nothing in there I hand walk him for just a little bit and then it's time for our run I do think I walked him up a little too far in the alleyway before sending him and I do think I'm kind of crazy for my first pro rodeo being like my third run ever on this horse but we had a good first barrel and we were having a really good second barrel my stupid little leg just got in the way and I just kept riding and we had that really really pretty 
Liberty third barrel. And I overall was really proud of this run. He was ready to whip it around that second barrel. I get him back to the trailer, get all that tack off, and give him some treats because he did it so good warming up and so good in his run. And he did have a little bit of water in that bucket that he drank, so I get it down and kind of clean it out and fill it back up with some more water. I do always want to make sure they are really hydrated and always have access to some good clean water. You can see here he was just so ready to drink. So of course I got stuck holding it for him while I took the biggest drink ever. When he finally pulled his head out, I hung it on the trailer so he could continue drinking by himself. Overall, I'm definitely not mad at that at all. I mean, I would have liked to not hit a barrel, but it went pretty good in my opinion. Only my third run ever on Dakota and it's just time to go on to the next one. We're staying here for one night and then we are going to Rosenberg, Texas and that is where Chester is going to get to run. I think Dakota is maybe a tiny bit dehydrated so I soaked some alfalfa and put it in his pan with the water so he can eat that and get some water and then of course we are going to give him some electrolytes. Chester here has not been ridden since Sunday, the very beginning of this video, and he runs in two days on Sunday. So we are going to get him out and get him some exercise. I'm going to go ride him where I warm Dakota up, kind of ride him around. That way he feels like he's warming up, but then he doesn't actually run. So that'll also help his brain and get him a little exercise. So let's get him saddled up. This ride is to really make sure that I am keeping him in good shape even when he is not running. So I wanted to hop on and I walked for a long time because of that haul and then I'm just going to trot around for a while and I do a seated trot on him. So I'm sitting down deep in my saddle and asking for a little bit of a slower trot. He is not always compliant so we have to work on it just a little bit but this is good to get him out and give him a nice workout especially somewhere where he heard the fair, he heard the rodeo. So I want him to know that not every time I'm going to hop on on him for the next year he is going to run so sometimes I want to just get on give him a good ride and then hop off and put him right back up in their pins that way again they know that not every time I'm getting on them when we're away is when they're gonna run <laughs> Oh. You're not terrible. You can definitely be a lot worse. You're not trotting down the pavement.
Poisson. Oh, you dropped it. I'm gonna nebulize him. I'm gonna do it today in the next two days so that it really gets his airways open before his run. I also steamed some alfalfa, so there I'm turning the steamer off and opening it up. I didn't steam as much as normal, just enough for this day, and we also got them some large pans for their water. We have made it to Rosenberg, Texas, where we are running today. Dakota is in a pen, and then Chester's tied up because we are about to get him saddled for the morning slack. We're gonna have to try and get them some blankets soon because he is already growing a little bit of hair. It's getting down to like 50 at night, so kind of time to start looking for them some blankets to have while we are hauling. Once I have him tacked up, it's time to go warm up and I totally wasn't sleepy or anything. I stand for just a little bit while they drag this little area and then I get on and I do just a lot of trotting on him. He was so excited this day. If you were also in this warm up, I am so sorry. He was feeling himself. So I trot around and walk around a lot again to just make sure he is really warm and I did lope him. When I got off, I pick his feet. Just again to make sure there's nothing in there that could be hurting him and just to get all of that out to help him run his best. You can see that I only had bell boots on while I was warming up, but I do always run in all four sports boots. So once I have his hooves clean, I'm going to put on his sports boots. This is to really support his legs and protect his legs during our run. <laughs> kind of sort of hit the first barrel. It was completely my fault. I take the full blame for it, but uh, don't worry. This bad deluck does not last for very long. We drive them to our next kind of horse hotel where they have these nice, again, big stalls with a little area to walk outside. Here's a look inside of this barn where we are staying at, and they are adventures. What are you doing, Dakota? You look very pretty. Do you not want your hair done? You look so pretty. Now it is time to do Dakota's full hair care routine. I don't know if you've noticed, but he has quite a lot of hair. So I have to take care of his mane and his tail really good. So here I am, I'm going to wash it. So I'm getting that mane really, really wet, just like a hairdresser would do to your hair. And then I'm using my purple shampoo. So I do use quite a bit and really rub it in there using my hands, making sure I get all of his hair really suds up. We are going to shampoo him twice today. So I just get this shampoo on. You can tell it's not really wanting to suds up that much but I'm trying to get it to and then I rinse it all out once I'm done rinsing it all out you can tell he does not like me holding on to his halter he's being just a little bit dramatic I just wanted him to stand still for a second so once I get all of this first shampoo round rinsed out I'm going to use another round of purple shampoo the purple shampoo is to try and get some of that yellow out of his hair make him a little bit more nice light blonde rather than a weird kind of yellow color this time it suds up way 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 more i think i use less shampoo this time than i did the first time so there's quite a difference there between shampooing and getting that dirt off and then once the hair is clean shampooing again and really getting it to suds up and cover all of the hair you can see how much i have on my hands there and now i'm going to let it sit for five minutes to really 
do its magic and once it's sat for five minutes, I'm gonna rinse it all out, making sure I did not leave any in there. Here he is being dramatic about me holding on to his halter again. I promise it's not a neurological problem. It is just some sass. I left my conditioner at home, so I'm just using some concentrated detangler on that hair to get it to really detangle and be soft, and now it's time to do those braids. This part literally takes me forever every single time. Once I finish those braids, I pet him and then take him back to a stall where you can get a really good look at them. And here is Chester, of course, always begging for food. And so after this, they do get their dinner. Of course, they were excited. The next day, I am going to ride and exercise Dakota. I'm very thankful that during this time, we had access to this wonderful, really big arena. And I love riding them in different kind of settings. So I really enjoyed riding them around all of these fences so they could really get a good look at them. So I walk him for a really long time to get him stretched out. He has not been worked since his run, so I do walk for a really long time. Once I'm done walking, I am going to post the trot on him. Don't worry about how my helmet magically appeared. It was actually there the whole time, I promise. So I trot around this whole arena and do some half size circles around just half of the arena just really switching it up for him and getting that brain thinking a little bit <laughs> When I'm done trotting and doing my little figure eights and different things, I do ask him for the lope. And I do lope some really big circles on him in here. I love doing the trotting to help them build and keep their muscle. And then I really like to lope to keep their wind up. I want to make sure these horses stay in good running shape. That way it's more fair for them when I ask them to give me all I've got. I want to make sure I know I have them in the best shape possible. Today, both ponies will probably be ridden again. Chester needs a nice long workout. It is really hard to choose which horse to ride and wear when you've never been anywhere. <laughs> so I know for tomorrow, Dakota is running, but it's still kind of up in the air about who will run 
Friday, but for right now, we need to get their stalls clean. It is definitely super rainy today, so I think the rain will move out. So I'm gonna get their stalls cleaned and then we will get everybody ridden later. While we have access to a super nice indoor arena, I'm definitely gonna take advantage of it because that is going to be few and far between for the rest of the year. <laughs> Can you smile? Can you give me a nice smile? Oh, you almost had it. So close. Can you move, please? So I'm clean? I need to clean your stuff. chasing you around because I know you'll make me. I can't have an escapee. Back up. You can't go nowhere. I'd really like for you to move. Go on. Go talk to your pal. I'm gonna shut you in your stall. Since you can't, you can't learn to act. Get your butt in there. No. Get your butt in there. This is going great. Come on, before I grab your halter. Am I gonna have to? Since you're a delinquent. Come on. You'll be freed as soon as I'm done. My apologies. That's your fault. Sorry about it. It's a really nice jail. staying here we have access to some really nice fresh shaving so I'm going to be making sure the boys have very very comfortable stalls. Chester really fancies a nice big bed to nap in so that is exactly what we're going to do for them to make sure they are as happy as possible. Of course 
right as I'm done cleaning and I'm gonna get him some new shavings. Chester goes right on in there and pees. Chester always takes a nap, so I do want to make sure he has a nice big bed to lay in when he does, and I'm going to ride him today. So I got him all tacked up and into that same arena that I rode Dakota in, and I, again, I walk him for a long time too, especially from the hauling and everything. I just really want to make sure that fluid in their joints is warm before I ask for a trot. So I'm going to walk him around, and then I'm going to ask him for a nice sitting trot. He is a special horse for sure. He was bought super hot. He just has been. He's a little, um, I guess hot is really the only word that I can use to describe him, but he has been doing really good. I sit the trot on him asking for him to slow it down and to bring his head to me a little bit, and I just kind of make the pattern weird for him. That way he can't guess what's happening next. So we trot some big circles. I trot around those jumps. I trot little circles. I switch the direction we're going every so often just to kind of keep him on his toes so he does not anticipate what's happening next. <laughs> that lope he was really really excited but he was still pretty good for me i do kind of those same big laps that i did on dakota to really build up the wind in their lungs for their runs he really was not bad this day at all i can't blame him for being excited when i asked him to lope and he had all this space to work with I wasn't really sure about it, but I did end up really liking this English footing. I felt like it held him really, really well and it was nice and soft. <laughs> I sprayed him off really good, got all that sweat off, and cooled him down. I let him stand in that wash rack under a fan to dry off and keep cooling down. I believe somebody has rolled. Where are 
stressed. I filled up Chester's really big bucket with some fresh, clean water for him to drink, especially since he did work today, and he seemed pretty thirsty. I do really like that he is a good drinker when we travel. I definitely love that he keeps himself hydrated. The next day, I ran Dakota at the Belleville, Texas Pro Rodeo, and I don't have a ton of videos because, as you can see, it is pouring down rain. Thankfully, this arena is 100% sand, so it actually held really good. I was number 61, watched 60 girls go, nobody fell, nobody slipped, so it was safe, I promise, and I was in his way quite a bit. It's just going to take some time to learn him, but we had a really nice run. We ran a 16-0, which ended up winning us a really nice check and my first ever pro rodeo check. So it was worth getting all of my tack. Disgusting. It took forever to clean, but it is all clean now. When we got back to the um, horse hotel place, he got some new shoes. I want to make sure I don't let their toes get too long or anything and that we are just staying really up to date with their farrier needs. So he got some new shoes and a trim this day. And this is where I'm actually going to end this video. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications because in my next video Chester wins his first ever pro rodeo check so it is pretty exciting so I will see you guys very soon in a new video bye